one major question as I was listening to you speak for me was uh, how do you protect against black swan events? For example, in Romania we had the renewable energy uh, situation where the government came and uh, cancelled the green certificate scheme and uh, investment dropped. That was a black swan event, a high impact, uh, low probability event. How can a company protect against such a, such a situation in terms of legal, legal risk? I think there's almost no uh, waterproof protection against the black swan. You know, the whole theory of black uh, swan as it was developed by Talib is that you can't predict it. Obviously, there is a very big discussion whether or not there are such risks which you cannot predict, and uh, there is a big academic uh, debate about this. But probably uh, Dalek is right that there are risks uh, which are not predictable. Mm -hmm. And there, the only thing which you can do is, uh, first of all, that you are paranoid. Uh, if you, only the paranoid survive uh, in business, as Andy Grove has said. Uh, the second thing is that you have a good crisis management which you can uh, bring up to speed quickly if something uh, uh, arises and uh, these are the two best uh, protections against it. Going along with the Taleb line of thought, uh, he preaches, so to speak, anti-fragility. Is there any way to make the company anti-fragile, uh, meaning there's a legal crisis, there's a litigation or something? And after that situation, the company comes out stronger. How can we do that? Can we make the company anti-fragile in terms of uh, legal risk? Yeah, we can't make it completely anti-fragile. Uh, certainly, uh, you come out stronger as, uh, from every crisis. And very often, uh, those who were hit in one crisis are the strongest in the next crisis and the other way uh, around. Uh, but uh, definitely you can make a uh, company stronger in, uh, by having a proper strategy, thinking what is your strategy, what is your business plan, uh, that you make it uh, safe and valid also in terms of legal risk, that you have a good governance around it, that people know what they are doing, that you have the right people, the right operations, that you use the right technology and that you influence the behavior of your people in the proper way and all this makes your company uh, more solid and like a ship. Uh, you can make a ship more solid uh, in the storm. Yeah. <clears throat> in your book, there are the seven steps. In your experience, where do things usually go wrong? Where do companies botch things uh, in these seven steps? When they're, they're hiring specialists, when they're dealing with technology, where do things go wrong, usually? Yeah, I think uh, the, the really big things normally go wrong on the level of the strategy and the business plan, that uh, very basic uh, flaws are made, that too big risks uh, are taken. Uh, but obviously also organization is very important that you have a good governance, uh, a risk governance, but also corporate governance, that you have a good organization, that you have good people. Uh, there are many things can go uh, wrong. Technology is, is very important uh, when you have a wrong uh, technology, many things can uh, go wrong. When you have read uh, today in the FT, uh, John Cryan has said that a weak IT, a fragile IT or a fragmented IT was the source of many problems at Deutsche Bank. And uh, finally, the behavior of the people is an important thing, you know. You can have a very big organization and it is brought uh, to the knees by one single individual uh, who does a uh, wrong uh, thing. We have seen that in a number of big uh, banks and uh, with these so-called rock uh, traders. Mm -hmm. And uh, considering the 80-20 rule, so to speak, what risk is the 20% the low risk that brings 80% of the consequences, monetary and uh, which, which is the 
paramount risk. If you guard against it, you have most chances to be safe as a company. Litigation, legislative changes, what, what uh, do we need to guard against most? You're looking from a proper company, it's obviously very difficult uh, to say, you know, I do not hold the crystal ball. If, if I would have this crystal ball, then I would beat the black swan and I would make a lot of money uh, with this. You know, the big risks, uh, the low probable but high impact risks come out of the woodworks. You don't know it in advance. But uh, I th think uh, it, it is certainly where, where are people very uh, sensible and sensitive and in, in a sense risk averse. It's when it goes about their money, their health, the environment. These are uh, the big risks. If you create something which goes against the health of many people, you have a big problem. So if you create something which takes money away from many people, you have a big thing. If you do something which really pollutes the environment, you, you have a big uh, uh, thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, one final question. You said that you like to uh, look at how countries tick. Mm -hmm. How does Romania tick in your view? Uh, do, what's your general perception about the Romanian legal market, uh, legal risks and so on? If somebody would come right now and tell you, ask you to share your wisdom within 10 seconds, what would you say, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Yeah, uh, Romania is certainly a very dynamic uh, emerging market with many opportunities and a lot of talented entrepreneurs. What uh, Romania should watch is uh, it should take legal risks as a country, governance of the country extremely uh, serious. Uh, if a country wants to be successful, it needs a good, reliable legal system, then the investors will flock to uh, the country. And the second thing which Romania should uh, watch is that uh, not some of its best talents leave uh, the country. There are too many highly talented Romanian uh, who go uh, for Western Europe, and that's obviously something which uh, damages the country. Mm -hmm. So these are the two policy things I would address. Uh, most vigorously. Okay, thank you, thank you very much.